What's up everyone? I can't believe that it's actually been over two years since I've made an update video to my channel and I do apologize for that. Uh, a lot has changed since 2019. We've had COVID, we've had all sorts of things uh, in my personal life. I've moved to another city. Um, lots of things have happened. I've also started in my own remote tuning business for Holly EFI. And if you're interested in that, um, just send me a message or find me on Instagram uh, under the same name, Project Gotta Go. In any case, we left off uh, last time talking about um, the system ICF and the importance of configuring the load axes. But today I want to dive into the fuel ICF, um, which is sort of the handles all of the fueling configuration that you might encounter. Um, we spoke about uh, scaling these uh, load axes and RPM axes um, accordingly to what your engine likes. This is just a base tune that I pulled up uh, that is included with the Terminator X software. Um, so let's go through this. So here, this is the basic VE table. So here, what this table is actually showing us, this doesn't show us fueling. What this table shows is the theoretical calculated airflow that we think the engine is going to be ingesting at any given RPM and load. So these percentages, so the units in this table are percentages. Now, I can tell you from experience that this particular table is only suited for stock configuration engines because a lot of you guys, if you're running cams that aren't making a lot of vacuum, you know, it's often that I see idle between, let's say, 40 and 60 kPa in this zone right here. Um, this table is going to be too rich for you, but let's not get into the tuning part of it quite yet. Just know that, that this is table shows um, the airflow that the engine is ingesting. And if you look down here, if you had a stock cam, you were idling at uh, 700 RPM, 34 kPa, which is not unheard of. Um, it makes sense that the engine is consuming less air than it is at wide open throttle, 7,000 RPM over here in this part of the table. All right, underneath this table, there is another table and you get to it by clicking this conversion button. This actually shows the fuel flow that corresponds with the, the whatever, you know, up in this, this area, it shows the car corresponding fuel flow that the ECU is calculating at that particular VE number. Now, also keep in mind, VE um, is not, we're not actually measuring the amount of air that's coming into the engine. We are, because we don't have a mass airflow sensor, right? Systems that have mass airflow sensors, they are able to measure airflow that's coming into the engine directly. In a speed density system, we are estimating that airflow uh, based on several parameters, namely the engine displacement, which is why we need to make sure that that's correct in the system ICF. And then we're also es estimating, estimating it by manifold pressure, or in this case, in a naturally aspirated application, vacuum and RPM. And a couple of other parameters are, such as air intake temperature. We'll get to that in a minute. So think of this as your airflow table and underneath it is your fuel flow table. And let's move on from here. This just shows you the graph. You can also do a conversion and see the graph for the fuel table as well. And when an engine is properly tuned, um, you should get this, this kind of shape to, a VE ta to, to the fuel flow table. It should look like a smooth blanket. All right. This is a learn table. This shows you the percentage of air as you're driving uh, between the VE table in terms of percentage again and what the feedback from the oxygen sensor saw as you were hitting different places on the map. All right, this is used for tuning. This is your target air fuel ratio table. This is probably one of the most important tables to get right in any application. 
I can tell you right now that the values here that are imputed are way too rich on the base tunes. So if you select a 2D table, that will allow you to change the numbers. A typical LS, if it's a relatively mild combination on my own tune, you know, I run an LS3 in my, in my Cougar with a Brian Tooley racing cam, stage two LS3 cam. You know, I, I go 14.7 all across the board. Now, I've seen some other videos that say, well, you should run them richer. I have not heard a compelling argument as to why you should run an engine richer at idle. Uh, that makes any sense to me. 14.7 air fuel ratio, that is the amount of air to the amount of gasoline that the engine is consuming. That's the stoichiometrically correct chemical relationship between those two compounds. This is different for E85 and it's different from for other fuels, but for gasoline, it's 14.7 to 1. Now, up at the top here in higher load areas, you do want to run them a little bit richer. Um, 12.8 is a reasonable number. If you do a little experimenting, you, you might even find that in the case of an LS engine that has good intake manifold designs and injectors at the ports, um, even something like 13.0, um, you might make a little extra power. So there's no reason to get overly complicated with this table. Um, something like this is totally acceptable um, and just move on. I see a lot of tables that have all kinds of weird, wacky numbers all over the place. There, there's no reason to overcomplicate this thing. All right, this is the acceleration enrichment. We need acceleration enrichment because when we first step on the throttle, uh, there's a sudden change in the in in the pressure or the vacuum level inside the intake manifold, and in that particular moment in time, there's also a surge of air that comes through the throttle body, and they, they need we need to compensate for that. Otherwise, we get a little lean stumble or a bog. In my experience, the default values in in a lot of these tables uh, work very well. I wouldn't mess with it. And you definitely don't want to mess with this t with any of these tables until your base VE table is tuned well. And when I say tuned well, you should be able to drive the car for a couple of weeks, put a hundred, cu couple of hundred miles on it, and the learn values everywhere in the learn table should be plus or minus five percent. That's a well, um, well put together VE table. That that's a nice tune. All right, temperature enrichment. Um, so this table works in conjunction with this table. Since the ECU puts um, run uh, runs the the car, most engines it'll run closed loop even when cold. Um, this allows you to program a, an air air fuel ratio offset so you run a little richer when it's cold. Most engines tend tend to like this. Uh, this table works in conjunction with this table, and basically what you're looking for is you want to change these numbers um, to achieve a closed loop compensation, compensation as close to zero as possible as the engine starts warming up. Again, this is done once the base VE table is well tuned, not before. Air temperature enrichment, this, is, this goes along with the idea that, uh, well, it's not an idea, it's a fact. As air temperature increases, the density of oxygen in, 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 in the air decreases, and we need to compensate for that. Um, so I see a lot of tunes where this might be all set to 100. Don't do this. If anything, just leave the curve that was there before. I personally find other curves work a little better, but this one should work just fine. Startup enrichment, um, one with, you know, this is the amount of fuel that the engine gets uh, when you're cranking. And so this is the cranking fuel table. The units are pounds per hour. So a good rule of thumb is to figure out where your engine idles. Let's say it might idle at 800 RPM and 50 kPa. And if we were to look at the fuel flow at that, at that cell, you're just a little bit over right around almost nine pounds per hour. So when hot, if that's the amount of fuel that your engine is using, that's kind of what you want to put in this area here. And then you kind of want to scale it up. 
All right, that's a little tip for, for getting your timing, I'm sorry, for getting your uh, cranking fuel dialed in. And the cranking fuel works in conjunction with the IAC park position. Uh, we'll cover that later, but the IAC park is where the IAC is parked, is, is in what position is the IAC valve when you're cranking, when the engine is off. So the combination of IAC park and cranking fuel uh, basically determine your air fuel ratio while cranking. Fuel control here, you can en enable a fuel decel function. I don't use this very often because I don't like the stump. There's a, there's a little bit of a stumble when the fueling re re returns, but if you want to cut off your, your fuel under decel, you could do that here. Anyway, I hope that helps you out a little bit, a uh, little more uh, information on the uh, fuel ICF. I do intend to make more videos and we'll follow up um, in the next week or so and post a part five. This will be part four. And, and in this case, in the next video, I'll cover the Spark ICF. Again, thanks for watching. Um, reach out to me if you need some tuning help. Um, the easiest way is to get a hold of me on Instagram at Project Gotta Go, and I'll be happy to help you out. Uh, be safe out there, like this video, share, and subscribe.